Hello, welcome back to Definitely Not Developer Commentary. My name is Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout. And now we're about to go to the second part of whatever planet this is, uh, as we're going about to go into the catacombs and go murder robots. So uh, uh, we're, we're pretty far in here, huh? Yeah, we're getting pretty close. Getting pretty close. Right, let's do this. Do we have any uh, audience questions to to go to? Uh, yeah, maybe we can start going through. Let me go. Let me go through some of the um, some of our backlog here. Okay, so here's a two-parter. I'll okay. read the whole question, and then we can choose how we're gonna go. We're not going to go through it. Perfect. Uh, okay. Back when I was a kid, I heard a lot of companies that funded studios, such as Sony with Insomniac, where they would only give the where they would only give the studio one or two years to create their games. It seems nowadays studios are given more time. Has it changed like I think it is, or is it something different? And how has that changed since your guys' early days at Insomniac? Follow-up question: As games are becoming bigger and bigger taking longer to make, requiring more people to work on them for much longer. How is it still profitable for a AAA game to make upwards of five, year, five or so years? Uh, seems like companies that fund these games would prefer to make their games as cheap as possible. So yeah, I mean, uh, so obviously, yes. Uh, if, if it could be made faster, and we cheaper, would want to make it faster. People. Yeah. Uh, but the fact is that like, games are way more complicated now. Uh, to make as we've been we've been discussing uh, on a few episodes uh they just flat out take more time like the teams are bigger uh but the the timelines have to you have to reflect how long you have to make the game uh and it just takes longer like uh you know back when they so were making are, so will you basically agree with the assertion that games are taking longer to make now than they did in the past? Or do you think that the times are fairly comparable to how they used to be in the past? No, I think it's, it's, it certainly uh, uh, takes longer to make a game now than it used to. I mean, uh, the, the one thing I will say, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you really quick, it. but in terms of the Insomniac stuff, when we were making these Ratchet games one every year, uh, even at the time, that was ludicrous. That was very there, fast. There were people that, games, were, yeah. that would find out how quickly we were turning around these games uh, back when we were making them in the PS2 games. And they were like, that is absolutely ludicrous. What are you guys doing? <laughs> like, turning around games that fast. It was really ambitious to be making a game that big in, in nine months to a year. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it, it's folly to compare any sort of game development timelines to those early Ratchet games. Because very few games were working on that sort of uh, schedule, even at the time. Uh, especially so now. But even at the time, these were these were very ambitious schedules, uh, and games would generally take longer than that to make. Um, but yeah, uh, Damien Derby, you can continue on your on your point. Sorry, I'm uh, trying not to die, and also to figure out where I need to be going. I think I need to be going over here. Uh, well, yeah, so, well I, if, I think if that's probably... what you're talking. I think one of the things uh, to to go on uh, a little bit to just well, to take a little bit of the pressure off you while you're uh, while you're not getting murdered. Uh, one also thing to mention is that uh, one, I think one thing that might color the perception of how long games take to make uh, is that as an outsider, when you hear about the game and when the game gets released, that is not the development time on that <laughs> game. Yeah. Uh, you, there are games that have been in development for a very long time that you have never even heard of, that I have never even heard of. Um, and this was, and this has always been true, right? So just yeah. because the, just because the time from announcement to release is two or three years, that does not mean that game took two or three years to make. And again, this was also true in the PlayStation days. Um, I can't really speak for a lot of games because I was not there, and I don't know how long something like God of War uh, took to make the first time through on the uh, on the PlayStation 2. Mm -hmm. But my guess is a very long time. Yeah. Uh, and even before you ever even heard about this game, uh, it had been in development for a very long time. Um, so a lot of these, kind, so trying to, uh, 
extrapolate as to how long these games took to develop is a very imprecise science because we can't really know how long a lot of these games were in development unless somebody from the studio comes out and says, Oh yeah, we've been working on this game for ten years. Right. We've been working on this game for you know X number of years. And even then, it's not like they were at full tilt production right. for ten years. It's like you know this game has been in various versions of pre-production, and then you know it got greenlighted, and then maybe it got changed and done over. Right? Like it. It isn't just. It's like, an inexact science, and it's difficult to say. This game was in development for X number of right. years. Okay. Oh, I got to do them all over again? Because what does it mean to be in development for a year? Does it right. mean to be in development full staff? Does it mean that you're actually building stuff that's actually going to be going on the disc and, you know, in the final game? Like, what, where, where do you actually draw that line into? It's like, okay, here's what full development actually means, right? Yeah, that can mean you can have any of those things that you said. You can have a game with a full staff doing everything that they want to do, and then everything gets thrown away and you start over. Yep. It doesn't happen a lot, but it happens. Then that, that, that development time doesn't go away, right? Even though you're starting over and making you sort of a, a, a obstinately a new game, that is, that is development time, even though none of that stuff is ever going to see the light of day. Yeah, and a lot of people probably wouldn't, if they were just talking to the press, wouldn't necessarily count that as development time. But they also might. So yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult to say. Oh man, How do, what's the button for the EMP? X. Oh, thank you. That was the only one I wasn't pushing because it's usually jump. Okay. It was in the top right corner of the screen. It's oh, it just, was? Yeah, it was just hard to see. It's in oh, is it only small. when the when the Yeah, when, it's, a, when full? it's full. And it's in a small font on top of it all. I, I came from that way. This one was very confusing for me to do. I had a, I had a tough time with this one. Uh, also, you can just choose to skip these as well, which I also yeah. found out, which which I was very much appreciative of. I may I lacked a little bit of the spatial. Uh, I managed to finish all of them, but this one was a tough one to wrap my head around the spatial. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. Uh, what were we just talking about? Game development time. And Game development time. Yeah. Take so. Longer. I, I think there's a, l a few aspects of it that, uh, but then there's also like, there's sort of an assumption that more time spent developing is more quality. And that isn't necessarily the case. Like, it's not like every hour of development time gets you one unit of quality. You know, like it's... Uh, You can make very high quality things if if you're but like oh man, this is so fucking hell. How do I charge up just killing things? Yeah. Every time you kill somebody the, the charge goes up a little bit. I'm just trying to parse this. Uh, so it's not, it's not, you can't universally say uh, that because a game had a long time, it's going to be better than another game that didn't have a long time. Does that make sense? Uh, so just tying, tying uh, development time to quality isn't, isn't necessarily workable. It's a weird thing. Uh and this is this is definitely on to a little bit of a tangent, but it's a very weird thing because Ugh. what you're saying is absolutely correct. But at the same time, for most games, you can kind of abstract this idea of how much time does this need, right? And like you can definitely have some game like, okay, this is a big game, it needs time, give them the time to actually sort of do that kind of stuff. You mean like it's a the scope of the game is large. Right. So the we scope know of the game we're... is large, so they're going to need time to sort of put it together. Like an RPG. Say. Like an RPG. Or right. MMO. And so that it, we sort of there there is this sort of general abstract idea if you're building a certain type of game, you will need X amount of time. Uh -huh. The the skill set to determine that time is vast and complicated. I am certainly not one of the people that's trained in making schedules, so I'm not even gonna try to put numbers in that kind of thing. But 
it is a it is a discipline and it is sort of figuring that kind of stuff out is a is a is an interesting it's what do. producers do yeah but to your point and i think this is something that's sort of also just true in terms of uh this this is something that appeared in one of our uh, throw in our one of our throwaway conversations from before when you're working in, in our artistic uh endeavor one of the things that's sort of paradoxically true that i've found is imposing constraints on your artistic sort of you know ambitions art, artistic ambitions can paradoxically lead to better end results absolutely absolutely uh, which is one of the things that's very hard to wrap your head around but even if, if you take out that idea that certain games need x amount of time to get done to say an infinite amount of time will produce an infinitely good game just doesn't follow from that yeah, yeah. having no constraints on your time paradoxically can very easily lead to a worse end product Right. And, and not necessarily from a worse perspective, but like there's some games that just take that that have been in development forever. And it's because because they keep getting rebooted. Oh, man, I am not finding where I'm supposed to go here. Uh, you want to follow those uh, the power lines to the pads. Yeah, I keep following the power lines and not getting anywhere. So that so there's another there's a pad that you're missing. That, uh, okay, so it's, is it, it's, not it's not this that one. one. That was already been pressed. So then there's a green one. And I stepped on that one already. So then there's a blue one that leads here, and that's it. No, there's another. So there's another nest that you haven't sort of destroyed yet, and that one needs its pad sort of destroyed. Okay. Okay. So what have I missed? The so red one? Find the nest that you haven't destroyed yet, basically. And then follow the line out to its to its pad. So right there. That that one right there. That nest hasn't that been nest. destroyed. Okay. So you have to go follow its I can't even look at it because these guys keep jumping out. It's right of it. it's right there. That's right there. Oh. Wow. Wow. That and was... now that button is available, so now you can destroy the final. Yes. Do it, do it. I like the glitch has her own little storyline. Yeah, you get you did her little final boss fight. All right, let's get down into the catacombs. This should be of use. Nice. Uh, what else we got? Did we did we finish exploring that? Should we go on to another question? Uh, sure. If you uh, yeah, let's let's do if it. You're comfortable moving on. I mean, unless there's something else, I don't even remember what we were just talking about. Uh, I've I've uh, I forget so quickly when I'm playing, at the same time as talking. All right. Uh, so this isn't a question so much as I think it's an opportunity for you to talk about something that we haven't talked about before, and I know that you've been. Uh, into, that you've been into this kind of stuff. Sure. Uh, so the comment is basically, I think it'd be cool in the future if you guys want, reacted to some Ratchet 2 and 3 speedruns since you yeah. guys worked on them. Breaking down speedruns would be really interesting, like Zem's speedruns. Um, we haven't talked about speedruns before, but I know we've talked about it. Well, we haven't talked about speedruns on the show before. Yes. But I know that you have gone through speedruns. Uh, you've been watching speedruns before. I have not watched them so much. But I was just wondering if you had anything to say, anything interesting about sort of your time watching speedruns, what you've learned, uh, what you think is interesting about them, sort of yeah. as somebody who's worked on these sort of games. So first off, I want to say we, I would totally love to, to do reacting to speedruns. Uh, I find them really fun to watch. Uh, I don't know that we would get a lot out of my reactions to them because I've actually seen a lot of Ratchet speedrunning. Uh, 
but uh, you know that doesn't necessarily mean it's not. Oh, you need you need to use the the snails. Oh, oh, the snails. Okay, man, not not playing the game for months and then coming back to it, you kind of miss a few steps. Um, so yeah, I I think it would be really neat for us to do that. Um, so, but let's talk about like what. Uh, just from a developer standpoint, like what the deal is with speedruns. Yeah. I know there's some people who don't like it. Like, uh, cause a lot of times in speedruns, you're, you're, the players are trying to break what the developers intended. Uh huh. Like the way I've heard it. So when you say people don't like it, you mean developers who don't like it or are you there just are talking about people in general? Developers. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. D there are developers who don't like watching uh, people speed run their game because it involves them Doing a lot of things that the developer spent... Oops, I need to speed, apparently. Doing a lot of things the developer spent a lot of time trying to keep you from doing. Uh -huh. uh, I saw someone put it once. Uh, in a, it, in a, a speed run, a lot of it is about what the game will allow you to do, right? Like what you can get away with uh, within the constraints of what the game will let you do. And... Uh, Usually when, when we're developing games, we're trying to keep you from doing certain things. We don't want you to shortcut past levels because we put a lot of work into those levels. We don't really want you uh, uh, just getting past them, right? Uh, but in speed runs, it's exactly what you want. Uh -huh. uh, and I like it because I feel like um, it, it keeps the games alive for one, right? Like. People are, are still really interested in the PlayStation Ratchet games uh, as speedrunning games. And, uh, uh, you know, you can't say that for a lot of PS2 games necessarily. Mm -hmm. that are, They're still around because there's a passionate community of people who wants to keep them alive and tries to... Oops, that is not where I was supposed to go. Yeah, no, oh, was it? this is it. Oh. Hi, monks. So anyway, I love speedruns. I love watching the imaginativeness like people have the the game they're playing is a speed run it's not the game i play <laughs> right when i'm playing the game they're playing on a different level oh are you kidding me uh undead grunthor yes please yeah the one thing i will say about speed runs is i'm not opposed to speed runs on any sort of philosophical uh level uh, the one thing I will say that I don't really watch a lot of speedruns, and the reason for it is, so generally speaking, I am into any sort of competitive thing. Like anything that has a competitive factor to it, uh -huh. be it poker, be it football, be it baseball, be it esports, be it any, like even like competition, like cooking shows. Yep. As long as you have... Uh, a competition attached to it, I'm usually on board. Like all I need to do is understand the rules of what's going on and that there's a competition and then I'm in. Like that's all it takes for uh -huh. me, generally speaking. Speedruns don't quite tickle that aspect for me because it's not a head to head. Oh, most right? of the time, yeah. It's usually like set your time, put the time on the board, and then somebody is going to come and beat it. But they do do them head to head, Tony. I know they do it every now and again, but that's not the main live events. But even then, like awesome games on quick is usually just like a person doing a speed run. Usually, yeah. Right. And so, like the most of the events that come with speed runs, it's just a person doing his run, and then they put the time on the board, and then another person is going to come and do their sort of run. Um, the one thing I will say is that a while ago, I don't know if they're still doing it, but. World of Warcraft for a little while, one of their sort of competitive modes was having these sort of timed dungeon runs where they would have a bunch of teams doing the dungeons head to head. Yeah, they even, still do that. I would, yeah. I would watch those all day. Like, those were awesome. I, if, when the head to head aspect isn't there, I just don't have the interest in it. And that's not what the, that's not what speed runs are primarily focused on, even though that kind of stuff is uh -huh. there. It's not really focused on. And again, the, one of the things that really makes me sort of, one of the things I really need to, to get into it is I need to understand the rules. So it has to be a game that I've played before. It has to be a game that I know fairly well, you know, and that kind of stuff. 
So it kind of really starts to narrow down the pool in terms of like the games that I like. So this is a, a, a bit of an aside, but like I know people love watching League of Legends esports and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so at one point, even though I never really played League of Legends, I wanted to see, wanted to get an idea of sort of what was sort of uh, what was so appealing, what made mm -hmm. people love watching League of Legends. Yeah. Uh, as sort of, you know, all that kind of stuff. But in order to do that, I had to understand the game. So I installed the game, played for like 100 hours, learned the game, learned how to understand it. And then once I learned the game, I was able to watch the LCS and really enjoy it. But if I hadn't sort of put that 100 hours into the game, figure out what was going on, it had no appeal to me. Uh -huh. So to get into a speed run kind of thing, I have to... would really be intimately familiar with the game to really sort of even begin to care uh, as to sort of what's going on with the speed runs. So it, there's such this sort of, there's all these weird criteria which make it very hard for me to get into speed runs as sort of a, a general thing because I'm not interested in watching people compete in a game that I don't know anything about. And some people can do that and that's awesome that they can do that. That's just not me. Um, which makes it, you know, difficult. So the, the thing I like uh, is when, so in, in some GDQ, whoa, what was that? Why oh, I think, the, I think the, I think the. Huh. Um, it must have, someone must have hit it over there. Uh, so one of the things I like is uh, during uh, Games Done Quick, they'll often do runs where one person's running and another person is explaining what that person is doing the whole time. And for me, it's like, uh, it's sort of like watching somebody uh, do a performance art, right? Like watching someone dance, right? But I'm not a good enough dancer to know necessarily uh, like all of the skill that's going into these things, right? I need... I need that color commentary to, so that I can start to feel like I know what's up, right? I need Chris Collinsworth telling me what to do. Uh, otherwise, how am I going to know, you know, so who's you winning and why? The blue one's a heavy one. Oh. So now they're going to push. So get on this platform. So what can step on it? I know they are not real. There we go. But I feel so I'm glad you've done this already. Otherwise, I would have no chance. About dimensionality. Thank you. Um, planks? Oh, wait. Okay, well, I almost got it by a technicality. Okay, what's going wrong here? So that, go back and step on this button right behind you. No, you had, so yeah, now just put the lightning there. And this, this will eventually solve. So they're going. So, but now they're gonna stop pressing the button. And so now they're gonna. Go across that yeah. way. Oh, okay. Wow, that's really complicated. <laughs> 